welcome, Karim. Hi, 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 Tito. Hello. So again, disclaimer, like I did in the last episode with Kiara, Corinne's gonna call me Tito. Uh, not because... <laughs> you know, I, was, I was wondering, uh, I was like, should I... What is it? Is it Tito John or is it John? <laughs> that would be so weird. <laughs> no, of course. Well, just a quick background for anyone who's watching this. So, well, I've known Corinne for quite quite some time, diba? Um, we've, uh, of course, now we're just reconnecting, but Cor was um, uh, a batchmate and a good friend of my daughter, Kish, who I talked about several times. So I've known Corinne um, or Cor. Um, I've seen her literally grow up uh diba? and um you know I, I i saw her in school and then i saw i see her now on tv so i'm really happy that we're getting into this this conversation core thanks for thanks for setting aside the time for this i know you're like super busy no i would have really i really wanted to do this it was just the schedule you know but i of course i would have i would have really put in the time for for you tito <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you happy, happy happy to hear that so i know you've been really busy especially with um you know with pinoy's um, um death diba? um you i think you've covered a bit of that uh, i saw you in times uh doing coverage so just to kick this off how 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 has that been because you know i'm sure younger people now and maybe even older people like when they see you diba? i mean you know of course so young but she's so you know she's out there i see her there every day how was that experience i mean covering such a big story diba? at your age and at this stage in your career how how did that feel i'm curious to know you know tito it was actually so obviously the story itself what we're covering is sad and um you know terrible news to wake up to but just the fact alone that i was able to cover something like that something so historical kind of um put things in perspective for me and it made me realize that or not so much you know it's not that i forgot it but it reminded me um of why i got into journalism in the first place it was because of these um, these kinds of stories that you, you know, that will literally shape history. And so that day for me was, um, it was exciting and at the same time, pretty hectic because I remember I was supposed to be on leave that day. Um, and then, and then the, the story or, you know, um, it, it broke. And at that point I said, I can't, you know, not um, go to work when this thing is happening, when this event yeah. um, is happening right before my eyes and I have the opportunity to be a part of the coverage. So I, you know, set aside everything and uh, made sure that I was at work that day. And, um, you know, being being in Time Street, I wasn't, I wasn't covering the wake itself or you know, um, where in Heritage Park, I believe that night, I wasn't there, but I was at Time Street, which is where um, ex-president Noy Noy used to live. And just seeing the outpour of support, um, you know, even during this pandemic, people still made it a point to go there and pay their respects in one form or another. I think it was just, it was so, um, it was just a really big, honor i think that's how mm. i would like to put it now i was able to see that firsthand i didn't even know that um that that was their ancest ancestral house i only i only knew when i was there and then i saw the plaque um that yeah. said nino yakino and also you know parang i was parang nahiya na rin ako na i didn't know you know what i mean <laughs> i was there and then yeah. sabi ko pa sa crew ko i was like Ah, ito pala yung bahay nila as in all of them grew up here. Oh, ano ko ba? So it's like, oh my god, I didn't, you know, I had I I I didn't know. So um being there, it was it was um an experience altogether. Good. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm happy for you both on a personal and a professional level that you know, you got to experience that um, at this point in your career covering such an important story. Um so anyway, let's get into that 
more serious stuff later on. But you know what I like to do during these these episodes is you know to get to know the person I'm talking with a little better, especially for whoever's watching this divine. I kind of do my own backyard research. I look back at memories and and stuff like that. So so you know just as a timeline cord, just to start now. So like I said earlier, I've known you for a while. You you you're a friend of uh, my daughter. You were together in in. Practically your entire grade school and high school, um, and I remember one distinct. No, I have one distinct memory of you among among you know a few, and that's oh, no. your dance. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's that's really your the, the, your dance side. Um, you know, I, I I saw you dance in 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 many a show, and uh, we always enjoyed watching you guys dance. Um, so talk talk me through that a bit. How did you get into it? Was that something that you discovered when you were young? Na parang you woke up at five and you know and said to yourself, "Kaya ko ata sumayaw." Or how did that happen? And I know, and I know that your sisters also. <laughs> dance right competitively right. At, at a fairly right. high level so where did this come from did your mom dance did your dad dance <laughs> nobody danced nobody oh, really? danced. Just, okay. it was just me and my sister so growing up my mom actually always parang she she made it a point to make each and every one of us so we're four we're four girls she made it a point to enroll us in whatever it was every summer be it you know guitar or or voice lessons or ballet or you know just kind of dipping making sure that all of our um we were experienced like in in all sorts of, of fields and even sports like i remember taking doing football pa one summer to no avail but you know um um so we 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 kind of you know had that side of us from the beginning And then I think when I found dance, it was you know one of those summers. And then I remember, um, I think it was grade grade seven. I must have been grade seven when we were doing auditions for for like I think it was junior junior ACDT mm-hmm. Assumption College dance troupe, right? So. Um, I I don't know it's so it's so vague in my in my memory but I parang it was like I heard about the auditions and then I said you know maybe maybe I can do this um because it's something that I enjoy doing I like I like dancing I like performing um and you know usual Filipino family na during Christmas and all of the occasions sayo ka or kanta ka you know so you know ikaw yung natutulak yeah 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 pero syempre ano ako yung tinutulak tapos go naman <laughs> so um i did the auditions and then and then um i think it was in my first year of first year high school was it first year high school or or grade seven pa rin i was ano pa nga eh hype junior hype yung mm-hmm. yung cheerleading um okay. and then and i remember thinking na parang this is not really me like i'm not really a, a, a gymnast a cheerleader so, yeah i'm not really like that so then so then come high school when it was auditions for for acdt na i remember i was so excited for that and i really you know made it a point na um to to do my very best and i think i i even had like summer classes prior to that first year high school because i needed to have like some dance Um, you know, some dance experience before the big auditions. <laughs> so after that, tuloy tuloy na. Um, I I competed throughout high school and then was fortunate enough to be um, recruited to legit status, which is um, a Philippine Philippine national dance team hip hop crew. Um, and then was also able to compete internationally through my membership with legit status and um yeah and i you know truthfully i feel that my um experience dancing competitively shaped me like big time because of the discipline um and you know just the rigor of being a competitive 
like a competitive any anything and just um and i think that goes for all sports and all activities that if you you know all of the lessons that you learn through that sport that you're that you put so much time in i think it it kind of plays out in everything else in your life so super grateful for that time in my life it was para super long ago na but it was a really really good really fun time for me Yeah and you know the reason I bring that up is first it, it's such a distinct parang memory for me of you I mean if I you know if I define you how do you know for I I'd actually mention that first or second oh, yeah. um one because we really enjoyed watching you guys it was so much fun um second I think we lived vicariously through you because none of us can dance <laughs> I mean she can dance she can sing but she can dance Um, and also, oh my I, gosh, if I could sing like Kish, okay na. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll tell her. Um, pero yun nga, I think the point, the more important point there is, uh, and I guess what we can share is, as you said, no, I mean, I, 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 I re- I'm really amazed that people like you who get so committed to something that you, you know, you do it day in and day out, something you obviously enjoy, but it's also something that you need to commit to and work. Work at every day, you know, and, and to reach a level, for example, that allows you to represent a country and compete abroad, de ba? I think is something that that a lot of people can be inspired by because you know the the normal route for kids, for parents, de ba? So okay, you need you need to take piano lessons, take guitar, do soccer, do volleyball. I mean, do karate or do jujitsu, whatever, to to get more discipline, but. You know, it, to me, it doesn't matter what the what the outlet is or the form is, as long as the commitment and the work is something that is ingrained in someone. Then obviously, it will pay off, as it is for you, the right? and uh, this career you've chosen, which we can talk about uh, in a bit, really takes a lot of commitment and a lot of discipline. And I think um, I would dare to say that the the dance, the dance, uh, you know, your dance life, your dance history, really kind of built up. That side of you as well. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. And I mean, it's it's kind of a distinct um, factor about myself that I don't leave out of any resume or because <laughs> even even um, like I remember when I was applying after college, um, applying to different networks, and I was talking with my mom. You know what you know how to arrange my resume and all I did I actually like you know kind of left it out at first because I thought that's a weird um, <laughs> that's a weird um, thing to, to say that you you know um, competed internationally yeah. when you're applying for a media network parang walang connect di ba? but then my mom was the one who kind of um, you know brought it upon me that no that's actually something that you can kind of highlight and you know not not everybody can say that they did that and that alone also shows your commitment and your discipline and you know all of the other values and lessons that you learned while being a competitive dancer um it'll you know it'll it'll play a part so you want us nilagay ko na okay 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 about it na and then syempre during the interview now okay yun yung ano i that's what i talked about a lot because you know it was in my head now my mom said okay this is a different you know it's a different thing that people don't normally hear so yeah it definitely shaped me to you know to be who i am now and i don't think i would be able to you know i think every every stage the man it it kind of um you know shapes you to be who you are mm-hmm. Um, for sure. No matter where you are in life, so yeah. Yeah, I mean that. I mean, super awesome advice from your mom. Because like, you know, just to share again to to anyone who's listening, maybe someone in high school or in, no, actually in college is about to graduate, and then you mm-hmm. know you want to get your first job. Ako kasi when when I you know in 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 the places that I've had the chance to interview you know for for positions or interview people for positions, you know I look at. I look at the extracurriculars. I mean, a lot of people think na parang ah, that's parang corny naman. You know, I need to sound professional, etc. But to me, kasi okay, your, your credentials 
from a university standpoint, your grade, your achievements, etc. Fine. I mean that that kind of tells me that you did fail college and yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna quit here. And okay, that's okay. <laughs> but to me, the extras tell me more about the person, the right? You know, if I if I look at someone and I see that they were in, um, actively involved in sports. And then that tells me that, okay, this person has discipline kind of naturally built into him or her. And that's something that I would invest in more than, you know, than, than any other credential. So good point. Okay, so let's jump. So, okay, from, from there, although I, you know, I'd love to talk about that more because, <laughs> again, we really enjoyed that part of your high school. I mean, you know, going to all of these things. But moving forward, so from... From assumption, right? You mentioned you mentioned that. So from assumption, you chose to go to to UP, mm-hmm. um, and I always, you know, even during my my college days or high school days, you know, my friends from from assumption who went to UP, what I'd always ask them, parang how did that feel? I mean, wasn't that a culture shock? I know, kasi that ano, I, I know that, and I remember again distinctly that. You went to UP Manila first, right? Yes. Yeah, you went to UP Manila first, then 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 transferred to Diliman. I went to UP Manila. Um, you know, I went to UP Manila as well, and I stayed because I enjoyed it. I mean, it was such a it was such a circus when I was there, but you know, I I decided to stay, and I'm sure that was that was even more shocking, de ba? Because <laughs> I mean, not to, I, I don't know what the state of the university was when you're there, but when I was there, my God, I mean. You know the little theater was. I we didn't know we didn't know it was gonna collapse. The steps yeah. were clapped. You know, if you pass by the biology wing, all of the like preserved frogs were just there. It was such a it was such a rich, funny environment. And um, you know, um, I also came. I came from Ateneo, and when I went to UP, parang you know there was a bit of a shock, but it was also mm-hmm. fun. How did that play out for you? I mean, talk. Talk to me about UP Manila first. <laughs> um, because I love UP Manila. I mean, I, I love the experience there, but it's a different experience. Eh, diba? And then talk me through you know, how the journey went to Diliman. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, what I can say is that by the time, because I started in UP Manila, by the time that I um, transferred to Diliman, wala nang culture shock. <laughs> Because you're right. I mean, it's it's um it's super different um from Diliman. You know, that's why when when I heard of my friends who were in Diliman, my high school friends who were in Diliman, you know, talking about um that they're parang sobrang na gulat, ito ito, you know, different different aspects. While meanwhile I was in Manila, <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but um no but you know honestly we were talking about what um what shaped me and how dance shaped me but truthfully my my one year in UP Manila the things that you know I was able to see just um you know just seeing PGH right across your campus every single day and seeing you know, patients being wheeled in um, when literally there's no, there, sometimes there's no wheelchair pa nga, you know what I mean? Um, or there's no stretcher. Um, you know, all of, all of those things on a daily basis, that kind of um, shook my world in a good way because um, I was able, parang natauhan ako na, oh my God, these things, pala yun. <laughs> yeah, like the, the, these, these things are happening and parang I don't want to just be a bystander to all of this. You know what I mean? So um, I, I took a political science in, in UP Manila um, thinking that I was going to be to take up law. And then when I transferred to Diliman, I also you know, intended to shift to political science there, but it didn't go my way. And I ended up in broadcast communication and Parang it was it was kind of um, you know I guess written in the stars na rin na um, had I had I taken up political science maybe I wouldn't have ended up um, pursuing journalism in the long run so um, my experience in UP Manila 
how I kind of, you know, there was like a light bulb moment na, you know, I have to do something more significant in a way that, you know, I can yeah. somehow, you know, influence the the little community around me that I that I have, you know, and then and then th- with that realization um, combined with me taking up broadcast communication, you know, that kind of was the equation to what I'm doing right now. <laughs> Galing, galing. I mean, that's sarap pakinggan ng kwento. Um, <laughs> kasi nga, I can completely relate. Di ba? Parang, when I, when I stepped into the campus, if I look back, no, to UP Manila, because I was, I was, the story there was that I was waiting for, I think I was, but I was waiting for something in Diliman. And then, so I entered Manila first. And I think a lot of the people who don't really take up medicine or who don't plan to take up med, Or even long up because Paul Sai is there, diba? Parang that's your plan. Eh? Parang you, you go to Manila and then eventually you transfer to Diliman. So that was always in the plan. And that was my plan every every single semester. It never happened because I had so much fun in I had so much fun in Manila. And the reason I had so much fun because it was so raw. I think that's the that's the best way to describe it. Eh? It was so raw. And it was such a stark contrast from where. I graduated from, di ba? Na parang, you know, you're surrounded by trees, you, know, you have space, and then, yeah. you know, it's such an old, and then you get into a campus where where there's no campus. Si- <laughs> exactly, but there's no campus. Everyone's sitting on the floor. Um, I ended up being, uh, I ended up having the pillars as, well, sorry, this is UP Manila talk, but the pillars as our tambayan. Eventually, my entire college life, and and you're correct, de ba? Parang the the appeal to me then was the people were fun. I mean, the people I I eventually ended up hanging out with were fun, but also the environment, de ba? Para walking down. And during that time, because this was a, quite some time ago. I mean, the red light district was still there, so you know it was okay. fun to walk. It was fun to walk, Ermita, de ba? There were still diners okay. there, you know, and it, it was so much fun. And with You know, you just drive to Ross Boulevard, and it was so different. And um, you know, we'd we'd play kunare basketball in PGH, and again, you had to walk through PGH and see all of these things. And and it's a good point that you raised. And you know, I never thought about it like that, but yeah, I mean, it does so much for your formation. The about you know, it makes you realize, and it's such a cliche yeah, that you know, when people say, "Okay, I'm going to UP," di ba parang ang cliche do na okay yan ma- ma- mamumulat yung mata mo sa, <laughs> yeah. sa katotohanan di ba <laughs> but but in a way it works for some people and for some people you know it, it's really not their cup of tea so I'm, i'm glad that that one year in manila uh served its purpose for you um so from there you you moved to diliman um so you took up um mascom or broad Okay, so Broadcom is the course and then okay. it's under the College of Mass Communication. Okay, but you took up Broadcom. Yes. But when you got there, you were really decided na ba, that you were going to did you were going to journalism or was it still like okay, I'm going to explore talk me through the thinking that you had then. Yeah, so so like I mentioned, I w- I wanted to transfer to I still wanted to take up political science when I transferred to Diliman, um, but what happened there was I I needed a prereq class to be able to apply for transferring, but I hadn't taken that class yet, so I wasn't able to apply for the course. So then I looked for other courses that I you know could be possibly interested in as well. And um, Broadcom fell under that, so I applied, and then thankfully was accepted. So uh, at that point, I still had my um, eyes set on pursuing law. It wasn't until my I think it was my third year in college when I took up one of my majors. Actually, sorry, it wasn't even um, a major, but one of the classes that I took was broadcast journalism 101 and when i took up that course it was around the same time that auditions for courtside reporter um was so 
I feel like it was during that year that I said, "Parang this is so interesting," <laughs> and "Parang this is so this is so much fun," and I really enjoy it. Um, so I wanna, you know, look into pursuing this for real this time. And when I was courtside, you know, it was it was super fun, and I had, you know, the time of my life. But it was also, um, parang I I. I knew already that I wanted to cover the news and not sports. I mean, um, no doubt that that you know it was it was a really good foundation because I I swear I wouldn't be able to do what I do now had I not um, had that experience as a yeah. side reporter. Um, but while I was covering sports, at the back of my head. I knew parang, parang there was there was just like a like an inkling towards towards news or or, or a bigger interest in that. So um it was really yeah, during my during my third year na lang that I decided or not really decided but um I guess I knew that I wanted to pursue journalism and news. It wasn't like you know right away first year ito na yon. It Parang it, it wasn't it wasn't like that, but I'm thankful that you know it went the way it did because you know I'm able to to cover the news you know today. So yeah, well, thanks for the segue. Uh, actually, on my on, in my <laughs> notes, <laughs> I was gonna get into Sorry, no. <laughs> to, the, to the UAP. Pero galig eh, ano talaga eh, batikan Um So okay, so. Uh, so you were in UP, um, and you know before we jump into the UAAP, which again was, you know, I, I'm sure one of the highlights of your your, your career so far. So you were in UP. Um, I mean, how did that? Did you like it? I mean, I'm always curious. Do I always ask people who, who? I mean, and again, I, I hope no one takes this wrongly. And you know, not not to be elitist in any shape or form, right? But I mean, from from high school jumping to a school like UP, Dubai, where it's so open, um, it's so liberal. I mean, you're actually encouraged to, to you know, to do things on your own. I mean, registration, palang, ah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Regis- registration, palang was uh, ano nyan? Eh? Parang horror, eh, eh, horror. <laughs> oh, horror, de ba? Parang sa akin double edged sword din, eh. Parang sinasabi lang ng tao, you know, you have to go through this kung taga UP ka. Okay, fine. But also, sa akin naman, parang... Pero wala bang online dyan? <laughs> diba, parang hindi, hindi ko pwede kumasenso ng konti. Ay, hindi ka kailangan pagdaanan ng, ng ano yan, ng, ng tao, di ba? So, I mean, just to talk me through quickly about your college life. That was, uh, you know, was the period of adjustment matagal? Or did you just jump into it quickly? How was that? I think, you know, like... I, like I said, because I came from UP Manila, adjusting to Diliman was a breeze. Peanuts like, na lang. <laughs> wala, wala, wala. And, and at the time, parang there was no adjustment to be made anymore. So transferring to Diliman from Manila was just a breeze. It was a piece of cake. Um, in fact, there was not much of an adjustment period anymore, but more of just enjoy na. Because I was so, um, parang sa naina and and oh. you know, um, at that point when I was second year college, I could just freely, you know, be, you know, find my footing na rin, I guess mm-hmm. in the in the um, in the campus because at that point I was there was nothing really you know to adjust to anymore. Um, so my college life was actually, you know, I, you know, I would say it was really the best, one of the best so far years of my life, because I really don't think like, if I were to look back at it, I really don't think I would be where and who I am now, if not for UP, had I gone, you know, had I gone to a different school and, um, or a different course, I don't know if I would be doing what I do now. So I feel like um, a big, big, huge chunk of me um, 
you know, is is grateful to UP because it really, parang, I think it really changed who I who I am and how I view the world. Because, parang if I were to to look back at the person I was in high school, be like, who is that? Because it was just, you know, completely, um, parang this completely sheltered girl who had no I no clue. <laughs> what the world had in store um and then going to UP where you, you how, how they say and that it's the microcosm of the Philippines so being there and seeing and experiencing college life there parang it kind of propelled me to to um like i said try to use whatever you know influence that I have to to make you know it's it sounds cheesy to say but make the world a better place somehow. And yes, um, thanks for sharing that. Because um, you know a lot of kids uh, when you're choosing your school, the right? it's really a lot of things come into play, the right? Parang one, am I gonna fit in there? Second, do I wanna travel that far? I mean, a lot of factors, right? But Again, like most, if not all people, like me, I look back at my school. I mean, both high school and, and college. Of course, you were such a different person in high school, diba, and in college. Like you said, yeah, if you look back now, but you know, by yon, diba? But, yeah. but I guess, but all of those years, diba, to me are are important because each year or each, you know, all of, all of these things really shape who you are and what you eventually evolve into or who you evolve into. So. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm happy to hear that uh, that UP did that for you, diba? and is is doing for a lot of people. So, okay, so college, so college is done, um, or you know after actually no no you were still in college when you when you became courtside, diba? Ah yes yes I, that was yes. my third third year third year in college yeah. Okay, but I know also third year, ba, or uh, fourth year. I think sorry, it might have been my fourth year. Fourth year at Fourth year na ba yon? I think okay. it was the, the auditions were in my third year and then the whole process um of of auditions and all of that was throughout that that mid-year sem and okay. then and then fourth year na yung yung courtside, yeah. Okay. So Shampre, courtside reporter. I mean, from the outside, you know, it's a glamorous, glamorous thing to get into. Um, exciting, and you get, you know, free passes to the games. You get to watch the games, <laughs> etc. So, you know, fun, fun, fun. But I also know, and because you know, I'm, I'm quite a fan, uh, as you know, because I've, you know, I've, I've seen you, in, you know, the venue. Um, you, you were courtside reporter for Adamson, right? Right. Right. How did that feel? <laughs> and ako, curious ako lagi dyan eh. Kasi parang, you know, me, and you know, maybe because we're weird, di ba? Especially, you know, if you're from either Ateneo or La Salle, parang you're so loyal to, to your school. And mm-hmm. I, I can't imagine myself, uh, for example, not that I can or I could, but I can't imagine myself being on the green side and, you know, and and talking to them and actually cheering for them. So, Right. So I was actually amazed and medyo aliw when I saw you, di ba? Parang, okay, how is Cor putting this off? Because you're from UP, you're courtside reporter for Adamson, so you definitely need to like be on Adamson's side, di ba? When, when, uh, how, did, how was that? Lalo yung semifinals, no? When it was Adamson, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. UP. Um, you know, it was truthfully like in the beginning, Um, Shepra, you 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 do want to report for your school, but ultimately, what I wanted out of it was to gain reporting experience, and I was able to to or I feel that anybody would be able to gain that experience, no matter what school you were reporting for. Parang bonus na lang if you get to report for your school, or at least that's how I see it. Because me, I was going into it. Um, knowing like i mentioned that you know at the back of my head i wanted to do the news so i knew that um you know if i were if i was able to 
be courtside reporter, then that could kind of be a stepping stone to my end goal, which is to be able to cover the news. So it was really, um, you know, at the beginning when when I found out, parang there were, it was okay, you know, I'll yeah, because I remember they asked me by they said, um, okay, we have we have one more slot left, but it's for Adam Son, knowing that I'm from UP, right? And so they then they asked me like, is that okay? And you know, without second guessing said yeah of course you know i'll take it and or not i'll take it but i'll gladly you know take be that slot that you that you have left and I, it was a no brainer for me and truthfully while i was covering it or covering the adamson um team that year parang i was able to expand also my experience because if i if i had covered UP, it was, it would have been, I don't want to, I'm just, you know, talking out loud, but it could have been, it may have been easier also because it was my campus and I knew already um, some of the players. So, you know, all of that. And it could, it would have been a little bit easier, but covering Adamson, I feel it, it let me, um, you know, I was out of my comfort zone. And like they say, when you're out of your comfort zone, that's when you grow. Um, the most. So I was, I feel that, you know, I was able to do that and I wouldn't have been able to um, learn and grow as much as I did and develop the skills that I did um, had I not covered the, the Adamson team that year. And, you know, good timing, Ren, because that year Adamson had such a competitive team. The, oh, yeah. the, the yeah. games were so good. Um, and I remember one time I was watching it so I used to watch most of the games. And I saw, I think, during the semis, ba? So that I distinctly remember seeing you, like, praying. <laughs> but I mean, that was one image that stuck to my head. <laughs> na parang, I think it was, in, you know, the last time out or something like that. And, mm-hmm. I saw it, you know, and, it, and that image stuck with me and stuck to me because what that showed me really is, you know, at, at such a young age, right? It, it, to me, that really showed professionalism. Um, which I think is the is the most important take out in that story, but beyond the glamour, beyond the you know being a courtside reporter, and, you know yeah. being in the middle of it all, I think the fact that you could do your job and do it well, and actually get emotionally involved with the team that you were covering showed um, you know showed a level of professionalism that it's hard to come by uh, if I can call it that. Like I said, I, I can't imagine doing that for a rival school. But that's me, the <laughs> but but I guess uh, the wiring that you you've gotten uh, from your background, from school, from all your experiences, prepared you for that, right? Um, and I'm sure it was a, it, it was such a fun ride. Um, okay, so courtside, and then I also know I looked I looked at your LinkedIn because eh, you know I do back back here research, and I also I also saw that you did an internship with with RX. Um, yeah, right, right, right. So that, that was, was how long? Um, I think that was during my, that was also during my third year, right before. Mm. Oh yeah, I remember because it was right or around the time that um, the courtside auditions were taking place or a little bit before that, because I remember um, in my third year, I told myself, okay, stop dancing first <laughs> and <laughs> let's focus it on something that's more related to your course because I was dancing, like I said, you know, high school and then even during college, I was still competing. Yeah. So I said, okay, let's take up, you know, let's pause on this and let's focus on something that's more related to your course. So I said, okay, I can um, audition for what do you call this? I, I can audition as a junior jock. Oh yeah, that's I, I auditioned for a, yeah. for a junior jock and then that's how I was able to intern there. But anyway, so I remember um, saying that I wanted to just somehow be, you know, just kind of dip my toes in the broadcast industry in whatever form, right? So it was, I, I auditioned to be a junior jock and then I remember thinking that I, parang at that time I knew that there was the courtside auditions, 
Um, and I remember at that time thinking, na, okay, just you know, go for both, you know, just audition for both. And then if you, you know, hopefully you at least have get one of them so that, you know, in the, in the, li the likelihood that you, you don't get one, you'll have at least, you know, something that's related to your course and something that, you know, you can, where you can explore. Um, and, you know, thankfully, like, I'm so grateful that I was, I was able to do both and both of those experiences, you know, kind of, it kind of snowballed na lang eh, na, na it, um, from there I was able to, to, you know, have my reporting experience. And actually my, my, my experience in, in RX was also great because I had never, um, you know, being, being on radio, it's a whole, you know, it's, it's different and it's also exciting because, you know, just hear, being able to, um, hear your voice and, yeah. Um, you know, it kind of also, you know, it, it um, motivates and parang it elevates your experience also because, you, you know, that's, hey, that's, that's my voice, you know what I mean? Correct, um, correct. So it was, it was also a really fun experience and uh, although it was really brief actually, um, but I was, I'm still also really thankful that I was able to have um, that, you know, yung, yung short and short and sweet experience there. Mm -hmm. Which is, you know, a pretty good build up. All of these things that we've been talking about, right. pretty good build up. build up. Yeah, yeah, to where you are now, which you know, which would be, you know, something that I'd like to talk to you about. No, so okay. Um, ito lang curious question. You know, I've always been curious, and we can talk about the more serious end of it later on. But you know, when I first heard you. Ang, the first thing that entered my head was ang galing pala magtagalog ni Cor. Galing yung tagalog ah. Nakasya. Okay, and we just to start it off, di ba? Hindi ka ba nahirapan? Kasi, <laughs> oh, di ba? How did that? I mean, number one, did, were you always good at tagalog? Um, and then how did you like push yourself to be where you are now? you know, to do actual reports on TV in straight Tagalog, which is, you know, which is nakakaaliw, di ba? I mean, it, it, it's something that, 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 that is so parang refreshing to see. So, sige, let's start muna with how did you get in, how did you get the job? How did you break into it? Uh, and then, I mean, how, what did you need to learn and, and, and practice to, to be where you are? So after... Um... <laughs> That's a, I mean, it's funny that you that you bring that up because I get that a lot. I mean, <laughs> you know, every yung mga high school friends ko, they're just like, what? Like, <laughs> you know, and even even here at home, um, because we our first language here at home is English. So yeah. sometimes um when you know when I make my sisters watch my my coverage or my report, right after I always ask. Did you understand what I said? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like that. And um, I feel like, you know, um, like anything, practice practice makes perfect. And I'm not saying that, you know, my, my Tagalog now is perfect because it's not. Um, I'm not going to pretend like, you know, it, it's, so, um, it's so polished and perfect because it's really not. Um, but to my... Um, advantage UP like I, I you know again um, I was also able to I guess practice already there and mind you ha me practicing there is talagang wala pa yun as in it's just um, a little um, siguro taglish pa nga lang dun eh but um, you know I actually um, when I was when I was applying for after college um, I was, I was thinking or, you know, deciding whether I wanted to go for a network, um, that, um, whose main medium is Filipino or, or, you know, English where, or another network where they use English as their main language because, you know, that's so much easier and that's so much yeah. more convenient for me right but 
parang for me, like on a personal level, I felt that parang I wanted to be able to make sure that I could um, convey my message to all sorts of people from you know all walks of life. And I don't think that I would have been able to do that had I, um, you know, went straight to an English um, speaking network. Network. Um, if, you know, right after college where I wasn't that good at Filipino yet. So given that, parang it, that's also what kind of pushed me more. Na, no, you, parang you have to go for, yung mas mahirap. Because I'm like that eh. Parang I, I, I prefer, I don't really like it when it's, too easy or not, yeah. not convenient not, or too it convenient would have, would have, right yeah. like it would have come with its own um set of challenges no doubt but then just the fact that you know while i was new to the whole thing and then i needed to um to kind of you know um i needed to develop my mind or program my mind in such a way to write my stories in filipino you know all of that kind of you know, it it was it was challenging and it is still challenging until now, but it makes it more exciting. And I mean, you know, truthfully, like kahit ako minsan nagagulat if you know that na, na I can na I'm able to write my scripts in Filipino. I mean, I don't wanna yeah. I don't wanna make it sound like I'm so you know, English you know, I don't wanna make it sound like that, but truthfully, um it it's that I mean gonna talaga like I I I'm not gonna pretend that you know I knew how to speak Filipino from the very beginning because I didn't and I remember pa during my my interview with um the network my my boss asked me marunong ka ba mag Tagalog <laughs> and then I said marunong po ka ma marunong but you know but then and since then and you know even until now they when when I'm um, when I submit something, they'll call me back and then, you know, say you have to read more. Um, magbasa ka ng tabloid kasi, di ba? <laughs> you know? Um, oh, parang kail- kailangan, you have to speak the language. Yeah, thankfully, I haven't received that comment in months. So I can kind of... Nice. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's But it's been, you know, it's been a one, like a hell of a ride, really, because... Um, it's it's so exciting to do, and and I love learning something new every single day. So um, so yeah, it's 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 been great. Yeah, I mean, I know. Eh, whenever I get a chance to you know to catch you, parang <laughs> means I'm my words gonna okay. I mean, just to speak, just to speak those words, matatabing yung or mababalok to kibila mo, di ba? But, you know, and it's again, it's a. I mean, not not to patronize you or anything, but again, it's it's another to me. It's another clear indication of the commitment, the kind of commitment that you can put into something. Um, you know, I, I always tell people you, you never stop learning it, right? Parang it's it's always there's something new that you can learn and can make you better, and then and, and that's that's how the world is. I mean, there's nothing wrong with having language as your uh, with having English as your first language. Right. Um, diba? If that's what your household was comf- or is comfortable with, which was also the case here, now lang I wish na when I, when I talk to Kish and 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 Rock, I tell them you know I wish I we actually allowed you to speak Tagalog, you guys to speak Tagalog more, on you know, in, in hindsight. But you know it is what it is, so they need to deal with, right. with that now. Pero one and, maybe one. Sige, go ahead, Thor. Yeah, just to share. Um what helped me or or at least what gave me comfort also where before i started working was so my mom is actually was classmates with um tita vicky morales of gma7 mm-hmm. also mm-hmm. um in in college so before we before i started working for gma we we met up and you know we we you know went and all of that and then um, um, helping me with um, the ropes and you know just just kind of laying it all out there and you know 
syempre, I brought that up also that um, my first language is English and obviously I'm gonna have to to be writing and reporting in Filipino. So yeah. how? <laughs> diba? but, then, <laughs> but then, you know, what she told me was that if I was able to do it, then you also can because she was also Assumption and then Ateneo. So, you know, and she said, pa, na parang, ikaw nga, mas may edge ka because nag-UP ka eh. Ako nag-Ateneo. So, you know, um, yeah. so, you know all of that, um, it helped because I was like, okay, okay, you know, I can, I can, I can do this. You can do this. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're also lucky, di ba, that, that you, you had these kinds of, like, mentors or people that you could ask and learn from. And, right. you know, now that you mention it, you know, I, I, of course, I, I've grown up watching um, Vicky on the news as well, and I got a chance to work with her some years back. Galing magtagal. I mean, you know, it, it, it almost sounds like it was her natural language, um, which to me, again, is amazing, diba? And, and I'm sure you're, you're, you're well on your road to, to getting that, to getting, you know, really more crisp with it. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, look how far you've gone, diba? <laughs> so, uh, maybe just a couple of more questions. Uh, so, I'm just curious. So, you get into you get into this, you know, you get into reporting on the streets, right? Um, I'm curious lang how your parents felt about that in the beginning. Because I was imagining, right? And, and you know, when I first saw you, I asked, that was actually the first thing I told Kish. Parang, oh my God, I mean, course on a beat, <laughs> di ba? Parang, I mean, I mean it, 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 it's no joke to be out there at, you know, really weird times of the of the night and even in the morning, diba? And I'm sure. I mean, how did how did your mom kunyare? What 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 did she first think about that? Because, like recently also, when I when I saw you covering during the pandemic, parang you know, parang I'd be if I, if you were my kid, yeah, you know, I'd be <laughs> terrified the entire time. How how did your parents, especially your mom, deal deal with that? Yeah. Um. Well. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. It was also, um, you know, major discussions um, prior to to taking the job. But something that my mom, and both both my parents, my mom and dad, all said, you know, that we're not gonna be the ones to hold you back from such a huge opportunity, and. You know, just that was kind of my go signal. Okay, sabi mo yan, ha? <laughs> um, <laughs> sabi mo yan, walang sisihan, ha? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, I'm sure it's, it's difficult for them, but I feel like they've also um, gotten the hang of it because, like, okay, just, just to share, my mom, like, put a tracker on my phone. <laughs> On my work well, moms, phone, so. moms will be moms. Yeah, so which I was totally, you know, if that's something that you need to do to kind of um, make yourself at ease while I'm at work, then go. Because, you know, I can't be texting you every single time we go somewhere because it's not, you know, we're on the go and it's so fast paced. I can't, you know, be thinking, oh, gosh, I have to tell my mom where I am. It's like, and you're, you know, a news reporter and you have to tell your mom where you are. <laughs> Parang, um, you know, those things that kind of help them. And, and me also, I'll do, I'll do whatever it is that um, to, to, to make them comfortable with, with my work. Because, you know, I don't want them to call up my boss and say, Ano ba, you know, as an yeah. anak ko, anak ko. Yeah, di ba? Kakahiya. So, <laughs> so, those are some of the things. Those are the adjustments or compromises at least that we had, that we've had to make. And I also cover, um, I, I, I cover during the graveyard shift. So, yeah. my, my time is, you know, baliktad. Baliktad, um, yeah. So that's yeah, also- and the graveyard, graveyard. Sorry to interrupt, but the graveyard shift. I mean, that there's a lot of strange people when it's when it's nighttime, right? Oh so, yeah, oh yeah. Um, and, so how um, was that? Yeah, so go ahead. Um, yeah, there are. <laughs> you see all, or I've seen all sorts of things that you know. I don't know if it's a good thing, but you know, because of all of the things that I've seen, I've kind of become 
used to it. I don't know if that's yeah, if yeah. that's a good thing. But um, like I remember, I mean, something so simple. But before, I used to be so squeamish and so afraid of horror movies, and I couldn't look at you know all any image of um, gunshot um, wounds or whatnot, you know, on TV in a movie, right? But then now, yeah, there's no yeah. reaction from me anymore because it's like, oh, okay, you know, it's like I have <laughs> seen that, you know, like two feet away from me. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. So okay. it's it's kind of changed changed my my perspective on so many things. But at the same time, it also parang parang working working the night shift and the crime beat. It's like a parang baptism of fire, you know, na you're not, you're not, um, it's something you have to go through to make, to be a better reporter. And of course, you know, you prefer, or at least me, like you prefer um, sleeping and waking up normal time. But if it's something that I have to do that will, you know, make me a better news reporter in the long run, then go. Um so so I've been having a blast so far and um as for my parents I mean they, they seem happy when I show them my reports so <laughs> so I think I'm sure they're more than happy I'm, I'm sure they're super proud you know? um, um yeah and when you, you mentioned the crime beat it's a quick question like, this is more for my curiosity so you go out right you get a story and then you have to run etc um, you know, and again, not to mean anything about males or females, but I'm sure, you know, you're also sometimes scared of your security, you know. So how does that work? I mean, do you have like guys to protect you? <laughs> I mean, do you have security? I, I assume there's no security for, you know, a news team. I mean, how does it work? So you're just there in the middle of everything. Yeah, so there's, yeah, there's no security. Um, as for, you know, as far as, you know, bodyguards and police, um, go right nothing like that but I am with um, my cameraman and my assistant cameraman who are both um, you know super reliable and and protective um, so I never I never feel unsafe and in the case that I do you know I I, I can say it and there's there won't be a problem so mm-hmm. that's also something that I guess my 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 parents kind of made sure of na okay sino ba yung mga kasama mo you know all every Correct. night um, yeah. but but yeah my my crew they're great they're 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 super um I'm super comfortable with them so um it makes work so much easier It's a uh, super interesting I mean I've, I've always wondered about that diba? especially for you know for young you know beat reporters and how does it go so thanks for giving us a peek into that i think yeah. we should devote another episode after this just around stories about oh yeah <laughs> about those you know, so, so much, much so much. much to say yeah yeah maybe for another episode i'll, I'll invite you back for that so anyway core you know i, I mean it's been sarap ng pentuhan, eh. it's like beyond so, an what? hour already already um, quick. yeah yeah like it's an <laughs> hour and 30 but you know I, um last siguro to just to round off the the discussion diba? um you know it, it i as i said i've known you for a while i kind of have an idea of how you know your, your career developed how your life developed um but i'm curious lang so what's next after this diba? Parang, so what's the goal what's the goal is it to get to get to be an anchor is it to do hard news and you know win the awards for doing hard news? Is it to get um, you know to get into more serious like investigative journalism? I mean, what, so what's next? What's 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 in your head? Wedding all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> Pwede naman. And knowing you, kaya mong gawin lahat yun. <laughs> Um, actually, it's funny because literally all of the three that you said, I was putting it in my head. Um, those three are, you know, they're they're there. They're part of the. Okay. They're part of the. Hopefully, you know, the long term, long term plan. Um, right now, though, I am, 
I'm excited to cover the elections. Um, yes. yeah, yeah, because yeah. it'll also be, you know, a huge, a huge opportunity and a huge story to, you know, be, be a part of. Um, and then after that, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see how things go. If it's, if it's, um, you know, picking up masters, that's something also that I am looking into and very much interested in picking up masters, hopefully abroad, but I don't want to, I don't want to preempt it, but it's, 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 um, at the back of my head, you know, that's something that I, that I want to hopefully be able to do, um, not too long from now. And then after that, we'll see where it goes. But, but the things that you mentioned, um, hopefully, you know, one time, one day being, an, uh, becoming an anchor and, um, focusing on hard news and, also um, doing investigative journalism. Those are some of the things that I'm really, you know, looking into. And also something that is, you know, hopefully I'll be able to do is cover more political stories because that's yeah. also what I'm interested in. I mean, um, covering crime is, is a huge stepping stone, but um, hopefully we won't, we won't, stay there too long <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think I've, seen, I've seen enough um horror <laughs> yeah you know, blood and um, guts yeah, yeah exactly so so yeah so those are those are the short and long-term goals that are that are all up here or up in the air for now that's excellent. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure you'll get to do all of those things um, and yeah. given your yeah, yeah. Given your track record, given you know your your history and everything that you've done, um, so okay. So you know, I I was gonna say also that it's actually I feel and maybe just to wrap it up, I feel in some way, diba, And we always say, diba, Even especially with this COVID, the it's such a it's such a it's been such a horror filled year and a half. But then when we look beyond the dark clouds and see, you know, some silver lining in it. Um, I think your timing, you know, whether or not it was planned or whether or not it's, you know, it's, it's, it's from God or from, you know, from luck, but you've come out in your format in a time that there's so many big things happening. I mean, to be, to be, to be reporting, for example, on COVID uh, and you being there diba, from, you know, this pandemic is it's a once in a lifetime thing, hopefully for us. Uh, and then, you know, the elections are coming and you'll be there. So I think also building all of those things into your experience and even in your career and your resume device is something that uh, I'm sure you're, you're happy with and you're, you're thankful for. Yeah, it's, it's been, like I mentioned, you know, it's been, it's been a ride. <laughs> like, um, and, and I'm always, you know, excited to learn more and just keep moving forward. Yeah, and any chance we'll see you dancing again? <laughs> <laughs> Baka ano, mga, mga um, online classes na lang. But <laughs> mga ganun na lang, tapos post-post na lang. <laughs> oh, tsaka, baka sa future mga velada, mga ganyan. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. So anyway, um, yun nga, like I mentioned, Cor, we've gone beyond an hour, you know, and it's been such an interesting conversation. I'm sure this can go on um, for a longer time. Two, and maybe, yeah, we deserve, I think we deserve a part two, uh, you know, and then talk about uh, more things. Uh, I'd like to, I'd actually like to really get to, I know, hear stories about know, the, the beat. I, yeah. I think that's interesting, Deva. Right? So, I mean, when we find the way, especially you, when you find the time, hopefully we can get an episode too. So, Cor, um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, uh, your tito's really happy. <laughs> thank you for, for sparing the time. Um, and, um, you know, and good luck uh, sayo, with everything. And, you know, I'm just excited to see where you go. Um, you know the whole family here is just really excited to see where where you you go and end up end up uh, with or end up in. Oh, I miss I miss everybody. 
please send my regards. <laughs> but thanks yeah. for having me. Um, it was so much fun to talk to you. Finally. <laughs> finally, finally. Part two, uh, part two soon. Okay, Tito. Thank okay, you so thanks. much. Okay, thanks. Have a good dinner. Thanks, thanks. You also, you also. Say hi See to you everyone. Good. Okay, Thank take you. care. Bye. 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 Bye.